So the other day, while going through some fan showdown submissions, I thought, you know, maybe it's time we do a little bit of a refresh on the fan showdown series. Maybe start a new series. New, new season is a better way to put it. Over the previous seasons, we've tried different ways to kind of determine which fan is the best. We've done air cooling, we've done water cooling, we've done just airflow, uh, and last season we did airflow through a radiator. However, I've always wanted to do kind of like a static pressure type measurement between the fans. I wanted a good static pressure analog visualization for which fan is performing the best. Which fan produces the most static pressure? And this is kind of what we did last season of the Fan Showdown where we had a fan push air through, you know, a radiator and then we measured the airflow with an anemometer uh, at the end, other end of a wind tunnel. This isn't really a perfect solution. Measuring airflow through something like a radiator can provide, you know, valuable information that lets us kind of infer which fan is likely to be producing the most static pressure, but it's not the complete picture. The biggest problem with this setup is that we're still using an anemometer, which measures velocity. Now, velocity is great when trying to determine something like airflow because airflow is just simply the volume of air a fan can move in a given amount of time, whereas static pressure measures a fan's ability to push or pull against a resistance, a force exerted by a fan to overcome an obstacle. Now, an ideal setup for like a static pressure test would be to use like a wind tunnel with a radiator in the middle or some sort of obstacle and have a manometer that could measure the pressure difference across that obstacle or radiator. The problem is that, you know, PC fans don't really produce that much static pressure. One of the best fans on the market known for its static pressure is the A12X25, and this fan's static pressure, if you look at its spec sheet, is 2.35 millimeters of H2O, or water, which isn't that much, and to measure pressures that low, the price of manometers, manom that's such a weird word, manometers kind of jumps up quite a bit. And this is just one of the popular ones that I kind of came across. I don't really know if this one even would work that well for PC cooling fans. Let me know in the comments down below. But this is kind of where I would start trying to figure out which manometer we would want to use if this is the way we want to go for the next season of the Fan Showdown. But going back to what static pressure is, that being a fan's ability to exert a force on an obstacle, I've created my own DIY solution that I think might work. And I want to present it to you uh, for a peer review. There's no, we can all agree, there's no better place to uh, present your ideas to find out if they're shit or really good than the comment section of a YouTube video. So get your fingers ready because I'm looking for feedback. So let's start with, uh, with my design. The start of my wind tunnel is this fan mount, which is set up for a typical 120 millimeter fan. In the middle, I have a 118 millimeter hole with chamfered edges, the idea being the fan disc will not be impeded in any way as it pushes air down the wind tunnel and having just the 118 millimeter hole will provide a decent seal for the fan to hopefully give it the best possible performance. Now after this here fan mount, I have the wind tunnel. This is 150 millimeters long. This will go directly after the fan mount like so. There we go. And within this wind tunnel, I have incorporated a flow straightener grid to reduce the turbulence and provide a more accurate, reliable assessment of each fan static pressure. After said wind tunnel, we have the obstacle, what I call <laughs> the flap. Now I tried to be as deliberate as possible when creating this flappy thing. The idea is that this door will be placed at the very back of the wind tunnel and we can measure how hard the fan can push on an obstacle by how far it deflects with each fan. Now I wanted this door to be as light as possible and I really wanted to try to keep the center of gravity as close to the center of rotation as possible without going above the center of rotation because I want the door to be light but I want it to automatically naturally want to fall straight down. Now the flap itself is just 0.2 millimeters thick and as soon as I printed it out like this, I knew I was gonna have a problem because this is way, this is way too flimsy. So in order to increase this rigidity, I added a very subtle ISO grid. Now the ISO grid is only two millimeters thick and one millimeter wide, but just this tiny addition of this ISO grid has increased the rigidity of this quite a bit. You can see when compared, so scientific. This one's very, this one's a lot stiffer. And using an ISO grid like this keeps the, the weight as low as possible. Now that being said, this still did lower my center of gravity. So I knew I was gonna have to put some sort of counterbalance on the top. And since I needed to add a feature at the top to balance everything out, I decided why not kill two birds with one stone and make this our little gauge, or make it a pointer for our gauge. And what I mean is on top of this wind tunnel, I'm going to mount this scale numbered randomly at 2.65 degrees per hash mark. 
The whole idea being that we can determine which fan is producing the most airflow by watching how each fan acts on this door and then the pointer on the top of the door will point to a specific value and whichever fan can point to the highest value is producing the most static pressure. Now the flap itself rides on two ceramic bearings to try to reduce the friction as much as possible. And the whole wind tunnel will sit on this stand, which is 78.5 millimeters above the table. And the idea here is just to elevate the wind tunnel above the surface of the table so that the surface of the table does not affect the fan in any way. I would say the goal of the setup is to hopefully have the A12X25 produce enough static pressure that it can deflect this door hopefully to somewhere around the midpoint of our scale. That way it gives us enough resolution either side of where the A12X25 finished to judge other fans based on our baseline. Also this whole thing needs to be repeatable. The A12X25 when mounted should deflect the door to a certain angle. When I shut the fan off and turn it back on it should go back to the same exact angle and if it doesn't well, we got other problems, but if it does, we're good. So the concepts put together, the A12X25 is mounted and hopefully, if we're lucky when we kick this on, the pointer is gonna end up, you know, somewhere, hopefully in the middle here. Pretty much right at six. Then we're gonna shut it down and hopefully we end up right back at six. It looks pretty much dead on. Perfect, right back at six. All right, as a sanity check, we're gonna try the winner of the last season of the fan shut on. This fan here was able to perform better than the A12X25 when pushing air through a radiator measured by an anemometer, so hopefully if our setup was halfway decent last season, this fan should produce slightly more static pressure than the A12X25. Six and a half. Consistency is looking good so far. Now I, do, I did bust out the T30, so we'll set this thing to 3000 RPMs. We know this thing is way more powerful than the A12X25 or the, the Dragon Wing, just simply it spins faster, it's thicker, it's just a beastly little fan. We'll see what that one puts out on this setup. Almost nine and a half. So there you have it, my static pressure machine, you could say. Three fans tested, three repeatable results. I think it's looking pretty good so far, but it's up to you guys on how you want to proceed into season six of the fan shutdown. Should we use this contraption to determine you know, which fan is performing the best. Should we maybe use this along with the wind tunnel and then average those results to find the best fan? Or, you know, we could just scrap the whole idea of this thing and just create some sort of manometer type wind tunnel with one of those gauges, if I can find one that would work and use that. So if you have recommendations on how to improve this, make sure to leave it in the comment section below. If you just want to just burn it, you just do that as well. But I'll probably try to tighten it up, tighten the gaps up, make it more airtight to make it more representational of the fan that's being used. But I think, it's, I think it's a pretty good start, a pretty good setup for a DIY static pressure tester. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and we'll see you next time.